Hi, Joe Alton, MD here, also known as Dr. Bones of the survival medicine website doomandbloom.net. Together with my wife, Amy Alton, an advanced registered nurse practitioner, we're the authors of award-winning books like the Survival Medicine Handbook, Alton's Antibiotics and Infectious Disease, and Alton's Pandemic Preparedness Guide, plus the designers of an entire line of medical kits at store.doomandbloom.net. In survival scenarios, there are plenty of occasions when the medic is going to encounter a group member suffering from anemia. Anemia is a condition in which you lack enough healthy red blood cells in your circulation. Red blood cells are what make your blood, well, red. Their job is to carry oxygen to your body's tissue and carbon dioxide away. If you don't have enough of these tiny disc-shaped cells, it can have major effects on your health. Red cells primarily consist of a protein made in bone marrow called hemoglobin. In men, anemia is typically defined as a hemoglobin level of less than 13.5 grams per 100 milliliters, and in women as a hemoglobin of less than 12. Anemia happens for different reasons. Survivors in a prolonged disaster setting are unaccustomed to being off the grid and could easily injure themselves and bleed heavily from a wound. This is the most sudden cause of a severe anemia, but it can also occur from lack of production due to malnutrition or medical conditions that destroy red blood cells or shortens their lifespan significantly. Their lifespan, by the way, is about 115 to 120 days. Depending on the cause, signs and symptoms of anemia may vary. If they do occur, they might include fatigue, weakness, headache, pale or yellowish skin, cold hands and feet, uh, you can really tell this pretty simply in normal times with a blood test, but it won't be available off the grid. So you just need to do a simple physical exam. Just check under the lower eyelid. That may reveal a hemoglobin deficiency. Normally, the inside of the eyelid is going to be a light red or pink. In anemia, it's very pale or it could even be yellow. Worst cases can cause major symptoms, things like irregular or fast heartbeats, shortness of breath, dizziness or lightheadedness, and chest pain. The worse the anemia, the less productive your group member is going to be, so it's important to do everything possible to treat it and increase the hemoglobin level. Iron deficiency is the most common cause. It's often seen in women who are or were recently pregnant or who have heavy periods. Treatment usually involves oral supplements like ferrous sulfate or ferrous gluconate. The usual dose is 325 milligrams, that's 65 milligrams of elemental iron, of ferrous sulfate three times a day. Now, some complain of intestinal issues at that dose, dark stools, constipation, nausea, cramps. This can take a lot out of a person, so you have to consider maybe a lower dose or every other day dosing in those people that are afflicted with these symptoms. Be aware that caffeinated beverages may delay iron absorption, while vitamin C, at about 500 milligrams a day, promotes it. In addition to iron, your body needs folate, vitamin B9, and vitamin B12 to produce enough healthy red blood cells. A diet lacking in these and vitamin C can impair the production of red cells. Some people put enough vitamin B12 into their system in terms of food, but can't absorb it due to an autoimmune reaction. That causes a condition known as pernicious anemia. Special B12 injections are given for this and for a lot of other conditions. Anemia can also be related to inflammation. Certain diseases like cancers, like lymphoma or leukemia, AIDS, rheumatoid arthritis, kidney disease, Crohn's disease and other inflammatory ailments can lower production of red blood cells or destroy them. For this, you need to treat the main problem, whatever it is. That's a major challenge for the off-grid medic, I'll tell you. Another group of anemias are known as hemolytic or blood disintegrators. They develop when red blood cells are destroyed faster than bone marrow can produce them. You can inherit a hemolytic anemia or you can develop it later in life. Sickle cell anemia, sometimes called sick as hell anemia, is a type of hemolytic anemia. It's caused by a defective form of hemoglobin that forces red blood cells to assume an abnormal sickle shape instead of a disc. These irregular blood cells die prematurely, resulting in a chronic shortage. Patients are often African Americans and they go into what we call crises that can be very painful when these abnormally shaped cells clog small blood 
vessels. Hemolytic anemias can also be caused by certain drugs, which can cause the immune system to mistake your own red blood cells for foreign substances. The body responds by making antibodies to attack and destroy its own cells. This can happen if you take any of these medicines. Cephalosporins like Keflex, fluoroquinolones like Leviquin, penicillins, nitrofurantoin, that's a macrodentin, or phenazopyridine, that's pyridium, these things are used for bladder infections, levodopa for Parkinson's disease, dapsone for skin disease, quinidine for irregular heartbeats, methyl dopa for high blood pressure, and even aspirin, ibuprofen, and other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Dietary sources of iron may be helpful, so adjust your food storage and survival garden goals accordingly. Eating a diet high in meats, especially red meats, may help. Non-meat iron sources include spinach and other dark leafy green vegetables, peas and other legumes like chickpeas, beans, dried fruits such as prunes, raisins, and apricots. Some foods are actually iron fortified like certain cereals and breads. Many also have B12 added as well. Other food sources of B12 are meats such as liver, beef, fish, and poultry, eggs, and dairy products. For folic acid, spinach and other dark green leafy vegetables are good, black-eyed peas, other dried beans, beef liver, eggs, bananas, oranges, and related fruits and juices. We mentioned earlier that vitamin C is a tool to help absorb iron. Good sources of vitamin C can be found in many fruits, some of which we just mentioned. Fresh and frozen fruits, vegetables, and juices usually have more vitamin C than canned ones. Vegetables rich in vitamin C include tomatoes, peppers, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, potatoes, and spinach. Whew! That's a lot on anemia, but it's important to have a base of knowledge so that you can know what you're dealing with when you have somebody suffering from it. This is Joe Alton, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, please consider supporting our mission to put a medically prepared person in every family by getting some of the quality medical kits, individual supplies, and personal protection gear available at store.doomandbloom.net. Also, subscribe to this channel and other social media, including our new group, Survival Medicine, on MeWe. Thanks again.